Hello grade 10, today we are going to do the balancing of equations, the balancing of vergelijkings. Hier is steeds chemie, so ek maak seker dat jou chemie werkboek by jou um, en jou handboek op plaats 193. This is unit 6 in your textbook, page 193. Make sure you have your chemistry workbook with you if you want to make notes um, and for your homework. Balancing of vergelijkings is baie belangrijk. Um, daar is seker een basisse aspekte wat jylle reeds weet Dat ek net vinnig weer moet daar sien, want jylle gaan dit die heel tyd gebruik as jy vergelijkingspaar. Eerstens, um, jy onthou van jou diatomische elementen, we also call it diatomic molecules, waterstof, stikstof, sierstof, fluor, kloor, room en jodium, kom in die natuur voor as diatomies. Dit beteken hulle kom nie as een atoom op sy eie voor nie, hy vorm een covalente binding om een diatomische molekule te vorm. We will be find it on the periodic table. Um, look at the purple elements, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and then your halogens are all diatomic molecules. Phosphorus and sulfur are polyatomic molecules. Dit net vir interessantheid, jylle gaan nie so erg daarop in, in graad 10 nie, maar dit is baie belangrijk dat jy jou diatomische elemente moet ken en moet weet dat jylle voorkom as a, as, as a molecule. What you also have to know is you have to know the phase states. If you look at your periodic table, the green ones at room temperature are always a gas. It's only at room temperature all elements can be either a gas, a liquid or a solid depending on the temperature. But this is at room temperature. So by kamer temperature is my gasse die groen is, waterstof, stikstof, sierstof, fluor, kloor, and then my edelgasse, my noble gases, and the other green ones, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, and fluorine, are all gases at room temperature. We indicate it with a small letter G in brackets, so it's in the blocky We only have got two liquid elements at room temperature. We've got one non-metal, bromine. Bromine comes always as a fluidstof for by kamer temperature, it's the enigste non-metal fluidstof. The only metal liquid at room temperature is mercury, Hg. So die twee blauwekies kook is die enigste metal vloeistof en broom die enigste nie metal vloeistof by kamer temperatuur. Die rest is allemaal gas, ach, vaste stoffe. The, all the yellow ones are solids. The solids we indicate with a small letter S in brackets. Die vloeistoffe stel ons voor as a klein letterkie L in hakies. Now, what is the water oplossing? The aqueous solution you won't find on your periodic table like it is there because the periodic table is gist of elements are in its neutral phase. As ek bijvoorbeeld natrium chloride, een ionische sout het, en ek los die ionische sout in water op, dan breek hy op in sy ione, wat dan natrium plus is en CL min. Nou, as jy een reaksie van dit sou skryf, Daai natrium plus, omdat hy in water opgelos het en omdat hy nou een lading het en nie meer neutraal is nie, sit ons AQ by dit. Die AQ wees die fase, dit is die ione wat in water opgelos is. If I look at another example, magnesium sulfide, um, or magnesium sulfide, magnesium sulfide is a solid at room temperature, it's a salt, an ionic salt, but when I dissolve it in water, it will be changed, it will dissolve into its ions, Mg2 plus and S2 minus. Now if you indicate that in a reaction, ionic form is dissolved in water, then I use AQ to show that it's in watery solution and it's now not neutral anymore, but it's now an ion. Right, so that's your volgens your periodic table, the phases. Um, dan is daar die wat jylle moet ken, jy moet weet water, H2O is een vloeistof, jy moet weet koolstofdioxid is een gas, those are, there are a few molecules that you have to go learn, but most of them you have used before. Then when a salt forms, an ionic salt, metal with a non-metal, we looked at that last week, it's always, it's a salt that forms and a salt is a solid at room temperature. So as jy jy ionische sout het, metal met een nie metal, dit is altyd 
Er fasst es auf. Ist bei Gomer Temperatur. Right, now the balancing of the reactions is precise. That's what it says. I can tell you that I can make that my reactants and my products are balanced. As with other words, that I have even fewer atoms on the left side of my comparison, where my reactants are found, as on the right side of where my product is. So if you look at that reaction in front of you, the reactants are always on the left-hand side of my arrow. That's what I start with. The products are on the right-hand side. That's what I end up with after the reaction took place. So the arrow actually indicates that a chemical reaction took place. Now, as we go on and zoom, my cool stuff tell the grays were first cell the grays atom. As cool stuff reacts with cool stuff, forms with cool stuff dioxide. I begin with one cool stuff atom. Ik eindig met een koolstofatoom aan de rechterkant. Let's look at the oxygens. You must know that oxygen is a diatomic molecule. So I have two oxygen atoms on the left hand side. On the right hand side CO2 also two oxygen atoms. And that is what the balancing of reactions is about. At the end there must be an equal number of atoms on the left at the reactants and on the right with the products. Now here is a very simple formula, because he works on self out. He is very clear balanced. He is not always so simple. We have to be more balanced. Right, here is another example. Here is what I do with oil, which reacts with water to form coal dioxide and water. We call this a burning reaction. Whenever anything combusts, it reacts with oxygen. As any organic molecule, you will later learn that it reacts with water, then I always get coolstuff coolstof dioxide in water as a product. Methane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Now, in this case, we have to get our molecules to double. Now, as I look at my formula for me, CH4, methane, CH4, consists of one carbon. That's the gray atom in the middle of that molecule and the four hydrogen atoms around it. If I, the only way, if I want to double my oxygens or anything in my balanced reaction to balance it, I, the only way for me to increase my number of atoms is to change the coefficient in front of my molecule in my balanced reaction. So, al ook om ek hierdie, ek, ons gaan nog meer in diepte ingaan hier, en ek gaan vir julle precies wees hoe dit werk. Ek het hierdie ene wil ek vir julle wees, die julle kan sien, as dat het twee voor die seerstof is, ek word nie van die twee binnen in die seerstof, die daai tweekie, oe twee sê vir my, dat is twee atoom, ek word van die twee voorom, die coefficient. Dit sê vir my, dat is twee oe twee molekule, so ek moet die hele seerstof molekule moet ek verdubbel. So ek gaan op die ouwend, kyk na die rooie seerstofatome aan die linkerkant, ek gaan op die ouwend vier seerstofatome as een reactant aan die linkerkant heen. Ons kyk gaan bykie na die producte. If you look at the product, CO2 form C always consists, carbon dioxide always consists of a carbon and two oxygen atoms. The carbon is, like you know by now, is the grey atom and the oxygens are the red atoms. Look at the coefficient in front of the H2O. That 2 in front of the H2O means I've got two water molecules. So not only the hydrogen is doubled, the hydrogen is doubled as well as the oxygen atoms. So the 2 in front of the H2O means I've got H2O and another H2O, meaning two H2Os, like in the sketch, gives me two oxygen atoms, the red ones, and four hydrogen atoms, the white ones. And if you now count your number of carbons, the grey atoms on the left, there's one, on the right, there's one. Hoeveel waterstoffen is daar links? Dat is vier waterstofatome links, die wit is. Dat is vier waterstofatome rechts. Look at the left hand side for the oxygen. There's four red oxygen atoms on the left. There's four red oxygen atoms 
at the right. So that means my reaction is balanced. Why? Because the number of atoms on the left hand side of my reaction is equal to the numbers, number of atoms on the right hand side. Now how do we balance reactions? Very important, we always start with making sure that my formulas for my reactants and my products are written correctly. Ons gaan dit vir jou op twee maniere vraag in jou huiswerk ook. Nummer 1, gee ons vir jou een woordvergelijking. En van die woordvergelijking moet jy eers jou formules vir jou reactantse en jou producte gaan skryf en dan gaan ons dit eers balanceer. Die tweede manier is ons gee klaar vir jou die reaksie, reeds in symboolvorm, en jy moet om net gaan balanceer, dis jou nummer 2. Most of the times in grade 10s, they will give you, in grade 10, they will give you the word equation, and you are going to have to write the chemical formula. And your step number 1 is always to make sure that separately, afsonderlik, first write, make sure that you write the correct formula for each product, and make sure you write the correct formula for each reactant. Baie, baie belangrik. As jy dan nou jou formules geskryf het, ons gaan nou voorbeelde kyk, soos dit vir jou vreemd klink, ons gaan dit deeglik deergaan. Second step would be, if you have written now your correct formulas, that you write down the phase of each reactant and each product, according to what we just saw. The solid, liquid, gas, or in solution, IQ. Dis jou tweede stap, skryf die die fases aan in hakies, aan die rechterkant van die molekules. Derde ene, ons doen baie keer stap 2 en 3 somme saam, die eers somme stap 1, 2 en 3. Jou reactante kom altyd aan die linkerkant, dis waarmee jy begin, peilkie, jou producte. Moe nie jou reactante, jou reactantse en jou producte omruil nie. It's very important in chemistry that you start with what you start with and that you end up with what you end up with. You can't swap your equation around. It's very important. Right, and as you then write your formula, then we begin with the number of atoms left and we begin with the number of atoms right and we make sure that it's balanced. So we're going to count the number of atoms on the left and by changing the coefficient in front of the molecules, I can change the number of atoms so that I've got an equal number of atoms on the left and on the right. Excuse. Hydrogen gas, diatomic, so we must write it as H2. You must know that. You must know that. Seerstof gas is diatomies, so we write it as O2. Jy moet weet, die formule vir water is H2O. So daar het jy nou somme jou stap nummer 1, 2 en 3 alles in 1 gedoen. Jy het die vergelijking geskryf. Nou skryf jy die fase in hakies langs aan neer. Hierdie moet jy weet. Waterstof is nie een vaste stof nie. Dit is een groot fout. Dit is een vloeistof. So daar moet een L wees. H2O is definitely in die kwit at room temperature. Now we count. On the left hand side there's two hydrogens, on the right hand side there's two hydrogens. On the left hand side there's two oxygens, on the right hand side there's only one oxygen. So now I'm going to change the number of oxygens on the right by changing the coefficient in front. That's the only way to do it. The coefficient is in front of the whole molecule. That's two times two, gives me four hydrogen atoms now. The 2 is also in front of the oxygen. 2 times 1 gives me 2 oxygens. So now is my aantal sierstoffe gebalanceerd. 2 links, 2 rechts. Daar is slechts 2 waterstoffe links, maar daar is 4 waterstoffe rechts. The only way for me to change that number of hydrogens is to change the coefficient in front. So ek het die coefficient voor die waterstof verander. 2 mal 2 is 4. En nou is my reaksie gebalanceer. Want ek het 4 waterstoffe links, 4 waterstoffe rechts, 2 seerstoffe links, 2 seerstoffe rechts. Nou in die begin gaan mens, moet baie moet speel. 
om hier die recht te krijgen. Dit is maar, dit hang maar, gaan maar oor oefen, oefen, oefen. En dit is ook moest veel leeuw wat zo'n mekies hiervan gegeven. Ons kijk nou nog een voorbeeld. Die volgende voorbeeld is ijsteroxid, wat reageert met koolstof om ijster in koolstofdioxide as een product te geven. Now we will not expect of you in grade 10 to be able to tell us what the products are. We will give you a word equation with the reactions and with the products, but you must be able to, from that word equation, write the correct formula. Very important, make sure that your formula for each reactant and product is correct. As your formulas for your reactants and your product are not correct, you will not be able to write the right correct answer. So this is the first step, but it is certainly right. Now, I hope you know that the Eister 3, the Romain cipher in 3, means that Eister has a loading of 3 plus. Why 3 plus? How do we know it's 3 plus and not 3 minus? Because it's a metal, and metals always find, form positive cations. Um, why do we have to indicate the 3? Eister is a Oorgangs element, a transition metal. We know that group 1 is always 1 plus, group 2 is always 3 plus, group 3 is 3 plus, but now iron is a transition metal, so I have to indicate in my question that it's 3 plus. So die 3 beteken eisters lading is 3 plus. Kom ons kyk. Ok, so the F, E, the 3 in Romans numbers means it's 3 plus. Oxygen is in group 6, and the charge of all my group 6 elements are 2 minus. Now I have to get two equals. And the only way to get equals 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 to get my total net negative charge would be minus 6 and my total net positive charge would be 6 plus. In this world it gaan. I moet op die ou en moet sy met die lading gelijk wees. Dan word het 2 eister, 1, 2 eister atome en 3 sierstof atome, 1, 2, 3 sierstof atome. Dit is ook om my eister ook sê so lyk. Right, so ek het nou gaan kyk dat ek my eisteroxid eerst gaan uitwerk apart. Koolstof, hoor jylle te weet, is net C. That's my reactants. Show the arrow. Iron forms as a product, just Fe. And carbon dioxide, we know, is CO2. That's my first step. My second step is indicate the phases. Daar is die oonies is sout, solid. Metal with a non-metal, solid. Koolstof, weet jy, is a vaste stof by kamer temperatuur. Iron, we know, is a solid at room temperature, and carbon dioxide, the gas that you are exhaling at this point, at this moment, is a gas. Right, nou gaan tel ons. Ek het twee eisters links, ek het drie sierstoffe links, en ek het een koolstof links. Gaan tel dood eenvoudig my atoom. Die getal ek hier wat na om is, sê vir jou wat aan hom behoort. Ek het een eister aan die rechterkant van my producte. Ek het one carbon. En ek het two oxygens on the right hand side. Now I have to make them equal. Best is to always get first start with your oxygens. Now the only way to increase that is to write, change the coefficient. If I change it to three, I will have... Three carbons and three times two is six oxygens. I want to make my number of oxygens the same. On the left hand side, I have to change my coefficient to two because now I will have four. Two times two is four ions, but two times three is equal to six oxygens. So that's the only way to make my number of oxygens the same. Six on the left, six on the right, so my oxygens are balanced. Let's look at the ions. There's four ions on the left, but only one on the right. So I have to change my coefficient to change my number of ions. Now my ions are also balanced. 
Dus kijk naar mijn koolstoffen. Rechts zet ik 3, links slechts 1. Hoe kan ik het 3 maken? Ik mijn coëfficiënt voor die koolstof te veranderen. En nu is mijn koolstoffen wat gebalanceerd. Dit is al waar we het gaan. Ik verander mijn coëfficiënten de hele tijd zodat so mijn aantal atomen aan die linkerkant gelijk is aan die atomen aan die rechterkant en mijn reactie is gebalanceerd. Laatste voorbeeld. En dit is die voorbeeld wat hulle veel nummer 2 van huiswerk gegeet. I did number 2.4 for you. It's exactly the same as the previous examples. The only difference is they already changed the word equation to a chemical formula for you. So hulle die eerste moeilijke stap vir jou klaar gedoen, want het is belangrijk dat jy nou hierdie balancering gaan oefen. Ek het specifiek hierdie ene gekies, want hy, jy kan het of op die lang manier doen, maar hy het een shortcut. And I know you like shortcuts, so I'm going to show you the shortcuts. But it only works if you work with compound ions, saamgestelde ione. Kan jy sien, ek het kalium nitraat links en waterstof karbonaat. Swaal lichtseer. Ach, um, miskies koolseer. On the right hand side, I've got calcium carbonate and HNO3, hydrogen nitrate, which is also nitric acid. Ek wil hier moet gaan kyk, kyk na jou saamgestelde ione, jy, jy moet nou weet NO3 is a saamgestelde ione, NO3 minus. En jy moet weet karbonaat van jou eerste kwartaalse werk is CO3 2 minus. Now, the method that I'm going to show you now is only if it stays the same compound ion. I start with the nitrate, NO3 on the left, with my reactants, but I also have a nitrate in HNO3 at, the, at my products. I get waterstof carbonate as a reactant on the linker kant, and I get kalium carbonate on the rechter kant as a product. Now you may break it up, but it's a lot easier if you because only and because and only because my compound ions also act as a unit. I can keep them as a unit when I balance it, and only like I said, if it's at the products exactly the same. So, I'm going to slags gaan doen as jy begin met nitrate en jy eindig met nitrate. Jy begin met carbonate, jy eindig met carbonate. If your carbonate change to carbon dioxide, you can't do it. Okay, there's my nitrate on the left, there's my nitrate on the right. Daar my carbonate aan die linkerkant, daar my carbonate aan die rechterkant. Kom ons begin tel. Ek het een kalium atoom links, ek het een nitraat, ek hou hom as een pakkie, net om het makkelijker te maak. Ek het twee waterstoffe links, ek het een karbonaat links. Ek ons kyk na my producte. Ek het twee potassiums on the left hand side, ek het een carbonaat on the left hand side. One hydrogen atom on the right hand side, one nitrate on the right hand side. Now let's start with the potassiums. We've got two potassiums on the left but only one on the right. The only way to increase it is by changing my coefficient. But now it's in front of the potassium but it's also in front of the nitrate, making it two nitrates on the left hand side, but there's only one on the right hand side. How am I going to make it two? By changing the coefficient in front. So now I've got two hydrogens in front on the right hand side and two nitrates on the right hand side. So now my nitrates are balanced, my hydrogens are the same, my potassiums are equal left and right, my carbonates are equal, left and right, and my reaction is balanced. Right, now your homework, page 196, number 1 and 2, the whole of number 1 and the whole of number 2. Dit is vrijdag vandag, ek gaan eerst maandag vir jou hierdie antwoorde gee, so asjeblief probeer dit self. As jy foute maak, dis oké. Okay. Dus hoe mens leer, mens leer maar weer jou foute te maak. But please first try it by yourself before you mark the questions on Monday. Good luck!